Welcome back to school year 11s. Um, we're going to do a fair bit of our theory content uh, through some flipped learning this year. So a lot of it will be delivered through these videos. Um, the idea is it will give you a chance to be able to stop, review the um, information, have a look at the concepts, do activities along the way, but then have these tools to be able to study for any tests or exams or potentially use for assignments along the way. So we're going to start off with anatomy um, uh, to begin with. Um, like at the end of last year, we're looking at um, the skeletal system. So the first task will be to watch um, the following video, and then there will be a few questions and activities following regarding the functions of the skeleton, labelling a diagram, and looking at types of bones. The skeletal system includes all the bones of the body, plus the joints where they attach to each other. Our skeleton protects our internal organs, provides a framework or scaffolding that allows us to stand upright and move, stores minerals that our body needs to function properly, and produces blood cells. Our muscles pulling this way or that way on our bones produce movement, and without the protection of our skeleton, even a simple bump on the head or chest could injure vital internal organs. Pound for pound, the bones of the skeletal system are stronger than steel. The skeletal system is made up of 206 different bones, which come in four basic shapes. Long bones, such as the femur, short bones like the wrist and ankle bones, flat bones such as those in the skull or scapula, and irregular bones like the vertebrae. There are two types of bone tissue, compact bone which is dense, smooth and very strong, and cancellous bone which is spongy and lightweight. Both types of bone tissue contain living cells which help make repairs if a bone is injured or broken. A typical long bone has a main shaft called the diaphysis composed of compact bone and two ends called epiphyses composed of cancellous bone. The main shaft is covered with a membrane of living cells called periosteum to which muscles and tendons attach themselves. Inside the main shaft is a cavity called the medullary cavity, which contains bone marrow. Bone marrow stores fat, produces blood cells, and plays an important part in the body's immune system. The skeletal system is divided into two divisions. The axial skeleton, which consists of bones that form the longitudinal axis of the body, and the appendicular skeleton, which consists of bones that are appended to the axial skeleton. The axial skeleton includes 80 bones comprising the skull, vertebral column, and thorax. The appendicular skeleton consists of the bones of the shoulders, upper extremities, hips, and lower extremities. The bones of the upper extremities, or arms, are connected to the axial skeleton via the shoulder girdle. This consists of the scapula, or shoulder blade, and the clavicle, or collarbone. The arm itself is composed of the humerus, or upper arm, and the radius, and ulna of the forearm plus the wrist and hand which consist of 27 separate bones. Because of this large number of small bones our hands are capable of more movement than any other part of our body. The bones of the lower extremities or legs are connected to the axial skeleton via the pelvic girdle. The longest, heaviest, and strongest bone in the body is the femur, commonly called the thigh bone. 
At one end, it is connected to the pelvis, and at the other end, to the lower leg, which is made up of the tibia, or shin bone, and fibula. The tibia bears all of our body's weight. The fibula bears no weight at all. The patella, or kneecap, is a large bone between the femur and fibula. It protects the knee joint and tendons that form the knee. The bones of the ankle and foot must carry all of our body weight as we stand, walk, or run. And the 26 bones and 33 joints that make up our ankle and foot enable it to do just that. The entire skeletal system of an average adult weighs less than 10 kilograms. If you attempted to replace this with a steel skeleton that was just as strong, it would weigh 400 kilograms and still would not have the resilience of bone or the ability to repair itself. Harder than reinforced concrete, lighter than stainless steel, able to repair itself, bone is the near perfect material to provide the framework for the human body. After watching that video, um, what you need to do is now in your books, be able to answer the following five questions. So we're looking at um, one, how does a bone, how do the bones protect the body? Two, what type of blood cells are produced from those bones? And um, what can be stored inside the bones? How does the skeleton support the body? And how do bones produce movement? So please make sure that we have um, a reasonably detailed answer for each one. After that, you will have a sheet that I would have handed out to you, um, which looks like this. And um, what you need to do is to be able to label on the diagram. Now, getting into stage one, this is the real basic understanding. So when we get to being able to name anatomical movement and things like that, to be able to identify what bones or muscles are involved in those movement, it needs to be real second nature that, that you know these bones. So that's important you do that. If you're unsure, you can scroll back to that part of the video again, or you can look um, to other sources of research, maybe a Google search or something like that. Once you've done that, um, what I want you to do is define the following. So axial skeleton, appendicular skeleton, what's the difference between the two? And mention a couple of bones that are within each of those skeletons. Please pause while you do these. Now, looking at the types of bones. So four main types of bones. We have our long bones, our short bones, our flat bones, and our irregular bones. So we're looking at examples of those bones and then what they really are there to do. So a long bone, which is a more common type of bone, something like your femur, um, but also um, the long bones in your fingers. So your metacarpals are also long bones. And what they do is they give leverage to increase the strength and the speed of that movement. Our short bo bones, which are the carpals, which are the smaller bones within, say, your knuckles um, or your joints, um, what they can do is they, they're also involved in protecting vital organs um, in parts of um, uh, your ribcage, but also they help provide that muscle attachment. So that what they do is the short bones in your, in your fingers might help with the attachment of ligaments or tendons within those joints. Um, so a flat bone, which is uh, something like your cranium, what that does is provides protection to the central nervous system, obviously, by protecting your brain. And then an irregular bone, um, which might be something like your vertebrae, what that does is that provides shock absorption um, by spreading the force between all the bones. Okay, so again, short 10-minute uh, video, lots of information in there, a few different activities. Um, by the start of the next lesson, what you need to do, so by the end of homework, is make sure you have those key terms noted in your book um, and finish the questions and activities, and then we'll move on to on tops of joint in our next lesson.